Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the FA18C. It's early June 2020. You guys have asked us to update our teapod video for air to ground use. Rather than updating the video, I'm just going to show a list of the things that have changed in the last few months. I will update the proper video once the teapod's complete and it's going to be changed many times from now until it's complete. So, one, stow, two, teapod azimuth display three teapod freeze function four grayscale five gain automatic and manual six attitude display seven snowplow and velocity vector slave control and finally eight automatic laser ranging and adjusted track control so there's a lot to go through first of all stow so if we load our teapot up the usual way. First thing that's changed is it now starts in a stowed position rather than a snow powered type mode where it's aiming kind of forward and a few degrees down. The way to get out of this is we can either click on VV slave here to slave the teapot sensor to the velocity vector or we could press that and then press it again and it would force the teapod into snowplow mode where it would be looking in front of us but a few degrees down and that leads into point seven which is that there is another way to uh, control that so what we're talking about at the moment to control vv slave and snowplow mode we can use a double press of undesignate slash nose wheel steering so that's new out of interest today we'll also be using tdc left right up down TDC depress and sensor control switch right or SCS right. So firstly before we manipulate this as we know we need to assign TDC to it. We need a diamond in the top right corner and I'm going to press SCS right for that. So to unstow I'm going to double press uh, nozzle steering undesignate button now. Ping and that's put it to VVSL so it's slave to this guy here and if I press it again it now goes to snowplow mode and double press it again back there double press it again back to snowplow mode next is to show that the azimuth deviation from our aircraft heading is now shown here so if i were to tdc left or right you know minus four degrees left minus four degrees right or whatever we've also got our elevation in degrees i'm not sure if that was there before but either way i point that out so that would be dead ahead if you like and so many degrees down with air to air and air to ground mode we get the freeze ability so if i were to freeze it there it's now frozen this image so that we can study this image further now what i could actually do is move the teapot around in various parameters now and it's not updating until i remove the freeze at which point it's now dynamic again now i've managed to lose my teapot now so if i wanted to get back into the base snowplow mode which is a few degrees down a bore site i could double click nozzle steering and then double click nozzle steering again and i'm reset to my snowplow mode aiming about there out of interest is well minus eight degrees and zero azimuth next change gain control this is only relevant when it comes to FLIR, so the ir mode so let's see that there we're currently alg box that's our automatic gain if we don't want it automatic if we want manual control which can be very useful i'm gonna unbox it there now with the zoom commands which are there and there, if you click between that, we can change the level and the gain as additional things we can change. So press it now, we're changing the level. Press it now, we're changing the gain. And back to zoom. So level, increase, decrease. I believe this means brightness. And gain, which I think means contrast. I stand to be corrected. I don't really know what these terms mean. I think that means contrast. We can change that there. Back to zoom. And I'm going to put that on automatic again. To coincide with that, we have a static grayscale that we can click there. So if we wanted to calibrate the teapod to a certain grayscale, there it is. Next, we have a attitude display here. There is a roll indicator. If I use that now, roll left and right. It also show my excessive angle of attack. So I'm going to angle of attack it. Try and pause that there. You can see it's showing an up arrow and how much angle of attack I've got. I'm trying to stop that there. Okay, and that's back down there. Which leads us on to the last change, which is automatic laser ranging plus track control. If I were to find some baddies, and I think I remember they're down here somewhere. So if I go back to CCD, I zoom in. There we go. We've got some things we can move our teapod. First thing we can do is press TDC depress to essentially create a target point. So we created a target point, which is that diamond there and automatically laser ranged 
at 12.9 to the target point. If I went into the hard, <laughs> that's useful, then we can see our target point there and our range is there again. Now we've got a target point created, but we don't actually have a type of track. We don't have an area track and we don't have a point track. This means that we still can slew our teapot about. So if I were to use my TDC keys, I could still slew about. And for instance, maybe I want to move the target point to this guy here instead. Okay, I've pressed TDC depress, I've created a diamond, the target point is now there. Now note, at this point in the HUD, that should be a diamond with dotted sides rather than four sides, telling us so that we can still move the TDC about. Currently, that's not working, but that will be how it's going to be, according to WAGS. Next, if I were to press SCS right, we go to our first type of track, which is an area track, which is tracking the land, I'm sure you all know. This is supposed to, in this case, show the solid diamond as we see there, which means that we can no longer move the camera about. We can no longer move the T-board. So I'm pressing TDC left, right, up and down. Nothing can move anymore, okay? Now if I was to press SCS right again, we've now got a point track, I'm sure you all know about, tracking the contrast. That should also be a solid diamond like we've got here, showing that we can't slew the teapot about. And I'm trying to slew now and I can't again. And finally, if I went SCS right again, it would go back to no type of track, just the target creation. This should be now dotted or dashed again. And again, I can move around. So that's the theory of how the new laser ranging and track control was working early June 2020. And that completes our summary of changes at this point. When the T-Bot is complete in a few months, then we'll do a complete new video. I hope that was useful and see you later.